From the first time Naruhito met Mosoko to the day they officially got married, a whole seven years had passed. Due to Mosoko's background as a diplomat, at that time, both Eastern and Western media speculated that she would be a modern-style crown princess, and even after marriage, she would continue to be active in various fields, injecting a bit of vitality into the traditional Japanese imperial family. However, this scenario did not materialize. It seems that the changes she brought to the Japanese imperial family were far less significant than the changes the Japanese imperial family brought to her. Crown Princess Mosoko, who had just entered the imperial palace, should be considered fortunate in her new life. She not only had a loving husband but also an understanding mother-in-law. Empress Michiko, like Mosoko, also came from a commoner background. Therefore, she could empathize with Mosoko's discomfort with royal life. Michiko hoped to be as kind to Mosoko as possible, so as not to let Mosoko endure the hardships in her early years. Despite being surrounded by love and familial affection, it was still difficult for Mosoko to adapt to the strict palace rules. During a joint press conference, Mosoko spoke about her plans and aspirations. As she spoke, she ended up saying quite a bit. In the end, she spoke for a total of 9 minutes and 37 seconds, 28 seconds longer than Crown Prince Naruhito. However, according to the customary etiquette of the royal family, her speech length can only be half that of her husband's. Back in the day, Mosoko's mother-in-law Michiko also went through a similar situation. When Michiko was with Empress Kojin, she asked a couple of extra questions. Immediately, a female official came over and said, don't act like an expert in front of the Empress. Now, Mosoko faces criticism for often speaking more than her husband. We understand. For a former career diplomat, especially someone like Mosoko who understands multiple languages, it's stifling to make her hold back from speaking. And even when she does speak, it's strictly following the draft originally prepared for her by the Imperial Household Agency. This is too restrictive for her. This press conference became the last occasion for Mosoko to make a public statement. The Imperial Household Agency imposed a gag order. In the following years of her life, Mosoko's only role was to play a dignified and respectful wife. She must always maintain a distance of three steps behind her husband. She must never speak out of turn. Even if she occasionally speaks, it must be according to a pre-written script. Furthermore, she must always keep a smile, so as not to let the media capture a moment that would give rise to headlines like Melancholic Princess. The Cold Palace completely imprisoned this girl who once loved freedom. From then on, if Mosoko wanted new western clothes, to change her hairstyle, or to meet with friends or go out, she had to first obtain approval from the Imperial Household Agency, and then spend several days or even weeks making appropriate arrangements. Without their consent, Mosoko couldn't even see her parents. According to a mate from the Awada family, in the first three years of Mosoko's marriage, she only saw her family five times. Her contact with friends also became fewer and fewer. Gradually, she became disconnected from the world outside the castle walls. Mosoko knew from the day she decided to marry Crown Prince Naruhito that she would lose herself, lose her freedom, and lose the bright career prospects she once had. She entered a golden cage. In this cage, her outstanding linguistic talent, including the knowledge she gained at Harvard and Oxford, became meaningless. It is said that once, after finding herself seated between Clinton and Gorbachev, Mosoko conversed with them in English and Russian respectively. However, she was immediately criticized by the Imperial Household Agency. They said that members of the royal family were not diplomats, and she did not need to speak English or Russian. There were translators for that, and her job was to smile. However, perhaps in addition to smiling, Mosoko's job should have included giving birth to a male heir. In 1945, General Douglas MacArthur, the supreme commander for the Allied powers, arrived in defeated Tokyo, tasked with overseeing post-war reconstruction. Under MacArthur's leadership, Japan enacted a new constitution in 1946, known as the Peace Constitution or the Constitution of Japan. This new constitution stipulated that the Japanese emperor would be merely a symbolic figurehead for the nation and the Japanese people. On the other hand, revisions were made to the imperial household law as well. However, 
Despite these revisions, one provision remained unchanged. Only male heirs could inherit the imperial throne. As the first in line to the throne, the crown prince naturally bore the heavy responsibility of producing a male heir for the imperial family. In fact, from the day Naruhito and Mosoko got married, the media kept a close eye on Mosoko's belly. At that time, Naruhito even joked with Mosoko, saying they were going to have a whole marching band. However, as the years went by, there was still no sign of a pregnancy for Mosoko. It wasn't until the sixth year of their marriage, in 1999, that the Imperial Household Agency finally announced that Crown Princess Mosoko was pregnant. However, not long after, she unexpectedly suffered a miscarriage. After that, the pressure on Mosoko regarding childbirth became increasingly overwhelming, to the point where it seemed she could hardly catch her breath. Fortunately, in the spring of 2001, Mosoko became pregnant again. The Imperial Household Agency placed special emphasis on this pregnancy. All of Mosoko's public engagements were cancelled. Her sole responsibility was to safely give birth to a royal prince. The Imperial family also held a traditional ceremony for Mosoko, praying for her smooth delivery. On December 1, 2001, at the age of 38, Mosoko, as an elderly primipara, successfully gave birth to her first child, the little princess Aiko. Crown Princess Mosoko, who had just become a mother, immersed herself in endless joy. On the day she was discharged from the hospital, Mosoko dressed herself early, wrapped her beloved daughter in a clean white blanket, and graciously bowed to the doctors and nurses at the hospital to express her gratitude. Then, accompanied by the Crown Prince, she held her daughter and appeared before the Japanese public. At the press conference celebrating the birth of the little princess, Mosoko finally couldn't contain her excitement and shed tears of joy in front of the Japanese public. She said, I gave birth to a baby, and she came into this world. When I look at her, I feel that this is the most wonderful thing in the world. The birth of Princess Aiko brought hope and joy to the Japanese imperial family and the public. However, it also sparked controversy as the Japanese imperial family still lacks a male heir. Mosoko continues to face immense pressure for childbirth. The Imperial Household Agency began to imply to Mosoko that she should continue to make efforts until she gave birth to a son. For this reason, they stopped all her official overseas visits. At this point, Mosoko was nearing 40 years old, and becoming pregnant again was no easy matter. Finally, overwhelmed by the pressure, Crown Princess Mosoko fell ill. She developed shingles and an adjustment disorder. Gradually, Mosoko disappeared from the public eye. The public events that were originally meant for both of them to attend started to be attended solely by Crown Prince Naruhito. Mosoko's mother was worried that her daughter would never recover if she stayed in the palace, so she insisted on bringing Mosoko and her daughter to the family villa of Karuiza. Without media interference or interference from palace staff, Mosoko spent several months in seclusion here. In May 2004, Crown Prince Naruhito was invited to attend the wedding of Crown Prince Frederick of Denmark and Mary Donaldson. At a routine press conference before his departure, a journalist inquired about the cancellation of Mosoko's travel plans. Naruhito, who had always been composed, suddenly put down his prepared speech, his expression filled with anger, and he began an unprecedented impromptu speech. He said that Mosoko's recent condition was due to someone denying her experiences and character, which had led to her illness and inability to work. Naruhito's statement shocked the entire nation of Japan. Mosoko received widespread sympathy and support from the public, while the Imperial Household Agency became the target of criticism. The Japanese people unanimously expressed their desire for the happiness of Naruhito and Mosoko, hoping to see the Crown Prince and Crown Princess surrounded by happiness rather than troubled by difficulties. It seems that Mosoko's condition has sparked Crown Prince Naruhito's determination. He hopes to amend the imperial household law to allow a female emperor to return to the Japanese imperial family. There has been ongoing discussion within Japan about amending the imperial household law. Prime Minister Junichiro Koizumi once stated during a parliamentary inquiry that having a female emperor in Japan wouldn't be a bad idea. In early 2005, he appointed prominent figures to form a committee to discuss this issue. Over 10 months, a total of 17 meetings were held. 
The committee members reached a consensus and proposed a modification to the imperial household law to allow females to become emperors. If this resolution passes, Princess Aiko would be next in line after her father, Naruhito, becoming the second successor to the throne. In this way, the pressure on Mosoko to bear a male heir would naturally cease to exist. However, things will not be so easily concluded. In February 2006, just a few months after the committee submitted its report, an unexpected event occurred. Just a few days before the highly controversial bill allowing women to become emperor entered the parliament, shocking news came from the imperial household agency. Naruhito's younger brother, Prince Fumihito, and his wife, Princess Kiko, were expecting their third child after 11 years since the birth of their second. This news threw the plans to amend the imperial household law into disarray. If Princess Kiko gave birth to a boy, the imperial dynasty would be able to continue, and there would be no need to amend the imperial household law anymore. On September 6, 2006, Princess Kiko, the wife of Prince Fumihito, gave birth to a male infant at the Aiku Hospital in Tokyo. This infant was named Prince Hisahito. As a result, Prince Hisahito became the third in line to the imperial throne, following Crown Prince Naruhito and Prince Fumihito. With the presence of a male heir, the allowing women to become emperor bill has been shelved. The pressure on Empress Mosoko to bear a child has greatly diminished. However, it seems that Mosoko's illness has not eased as a result. She continues to decline participation in most public activities. Speaking of it is truly sigh-inducing. Once a modern woman on the verge of becoming a high-ranking diplomat, she was gradually confined to the point of losing her voice and falling into depression, ultimately reduced to a mere tool for child-rearing. In the end, the Reiwa era arrived. Naruhito, Mosoko's husband, became the emperor, and she became the empress. However, due to the birth of Prince Hisahito, Emperor Naruhito's younger brother, Prince Fumihito, rather than Princess Aiko, became the crown prince. As Mosoko became the Empress of Japan, her official duties gradually increased, and she appeared more and more in public. Perhaps deep down in Mosoko's heart, she still hoped that Princess Aiko would not become the female emperor, but instead lead an ordinary life, doing the things she loved, which would be much happier than becoming a prisoner of luxury and extravagance.